So you, we have seen this before. General form. So general form is when it's 0 equals ax plus by plus c. Okay, so we've done this already. This is just going to be review. Now even this called general form, this first question doesn't really have anything to do with general form. This is back to kind of a real life question and we're going to do some review of even the last unit. Okay, now putting up your hand, can somebody tell me the domain? Well, let's read it first. Okay, uh, Laura, uh, or Leora, I don't know what, how you spell it or pronounce that. Quenches it after a hockey, after soccer game by drinking a large glass of water at a constant rate. The straight line below shows how the volume of water in the glass changes with time. Now, can somebody putting up their hand tell me what the domain of this graph is? Hisham, what would you say? Less than or equal to 12. Good. That's the domain. The range. Someone else. What would be the range of this graph? Raven. Good. Okay. Now, instead of, I'm going to call it V, right? Time is between 0 and 12 seconds, right? And the range is between 0 and 600 milliliters. The slope, okay? Now remember, slope is change in y over change in x, okay? That's what the triangle means, delta. I r recommend using the biggest triangle possible that you have some nice sweet points. So Raven, what would the numbers be? Okay, so you're starting here, correct? Yeah. So would it be 600? Yeah, that's where I'm not getting you. Because are we rising or falling? So that's a negative 600 over... Now let's put the units in there. That's milliliters over 12 seconds. That's going to help you a lot because it's asking, what does it mean? Well, it's going to just come out with what it means. And if you go negative 600 divided by 12, you'll get 50 milliliters per second. So what, what is that? What is that? The, no, be specific to the question. Okay, so it's a rate, correct? Yeah. So you would, Leora is drinking, I've never actually taught a Leora, is drinking at a rate of 50 milliliters per second. Now, I know it's a negative, but what's that showing? That it's emptying at a, relate, at a rate of 50 mils per second. If it was filling up, it would be positive 50 mils per second, okay? So that negative, I mean, those of you that are in uh, Science 10, you're looking at this kind of stuff. Negative and positive just means the direction more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could. Okay. So, what is the y-intercept and what does it represent? Okay, I don't want you yelling this out. What is the y-intercept and what does it represent? I got the same two people again here. Yes. Okay, so what is the volume of 
a full glass of water. And you know, s students really struggle with this stuff because it's like, yeah, I, I see the pic, I see the 600. I don't know what that means. You know, I get that a lot. I don't know what 600 means. So you have to read the question, okay? And you guys may remember the test that you did, right? That it says, it said right in the question that there's a $25 or there's a flat fee for insurance, right? Well, some people didn't read that when it was coming to, remember that uh, boat rental question on the test? So people, some people said $25 was uh, how much it was for one hour, right? And then $29 after that, okay? Well, actually, no, it was $25 plus 29 for one hour, right? They did a flat fee of insurance, and then after that, now, what would be the equation of the line in slope-intercept form? Slope-intercept form, yes. Awesome. Or, can I be specific and call it 50T, and I could actually even call this V equals. V equals... Because we know this is y, and y is v, and we know this is x, and x is t, right? So that's specific to the question. Now, I'm not in the habit of marking that wrong. If you said y equals negative 50x plus 100, right? That's still technically correct. This is just a bit more specific to this question. Okay, so here's the very first time today that we're going to actually work with it. But what would be the general form. Now, to make it general, it must equal 0. So what would I do to make this equal 0? I'll subtract v to both sides, okay? So 0 would equal negative 50t minus v plus 600. Okay, yes, I know. Let me ch chill out for a sec, okay? And yes, we cannot have a negative 50 so we're going to multiply everybody by negative 1. So 0 would equal, that would be 50t. This would be plus v minus 600. Now, even though this is an accepted form, the general form. It's actually the most useless form for understanding. Okay? If I said, okay, guys, um, the owner's drinking water, and the equation for it is 50t plus v minus 600, everyone would be like, what? Like, wh where'd you get that from? What do you mean, where'd you get that from? Doesn't it make sense? Why is it 50t? I thought it was supposed to be negative 50t. I thought it was going down. No, we multiplied everybody by negative 1. Why would you multiply everybody by negative 1? Right? So if you started with general, um, you could just see the pandemonium. No one would get it. And general, the only thing that general has going for it is it is all on one side. No denominators. Right? And the first thing. So it maybe looks nice and neat but entirely useless for knowledge or for application, okay? The slope y-intercept form is perfect. My y-intercept, that's what I'm starting with, okay? That makes sense. That's how much water I had. And the slope, that's how fast she's drinking it, okay? So, so much information can come out of here. Like, if you said this is the volume that Leona's drinking, negative 50, I could figure out a lot of stuff from here. That's initial volume. That's the rate she's consuming it. Okay? Here, y y yeah, whatever, right? So this has no meaning, okay? It's just, again, a form that you should know. And if you're given it in this form, how could you establish meaning from it? Get it into this form. Maybe add V to both sides, right? And you'll see if you add V to both sides, you'll have a negative V over here. 
And you're like, okay, that's not good either. So then you're going to multiply it by negative 1 and the others by negative 1, and you'll get back here where you can get meaning. Okay? Now the x-intercept is the x-coordinate of where the line crosses the x-axis. Identify the x-intercept. So that's 12 seconds. But more importantly, what is that? Okay? What is that? Yes? Okay, yeah. The amount of time needed for Leona to finish 600 milliliters of water. Now that is a very specific to this question explanation. Okay? Mathematically, how do you find x-intercept? So if you gave me this equation, v equals negative 50t plus 600, how do I find the x-intercept without seeing a graph? No, I don't think there is a worksheet for this one. Let's do a check that out. Just the math teachers. I'm the math department head. Yeah, that's, that sounds glamorous, yeah. <laughs> okay, so back to here. Negative 50t plus 600. Mathematically, I, if I'm not given a picture, I'm given that equation, how would I find the x-intercept? Yes? Make y, Make y equals 0. So that means this is going to equal 0, equals negative 50t plus 600. Okay, that's good. Now what do I do? I've made it equal 0. Connor? No, it is adding, therefore you must do the opposite. Subtract 600. So negative 600 equals negative 50t. Divide by negative 50 on both sides, and you will get 12 to equal t. Okay? So remember, on any x-intercept, it's always going to be something comma zero because um, the y value is always zero for the x-intercept. And the same thing if you're finding y-intercept, this is always going to be zero comma y. So that's how you can always find your x and y-intercepts. Okay. So we're just going to practice these two writing in general form. Okay. Now, we've done these already. Who remembers the first thing to do? Let's start mixing it up here. Cool. Multiply by 3. So I'll get 3y equals negative 2 plus 18. 2x. 2x. Then what do I always do next? Subtract 3y. So I'm going to minus 3y, minus 3y. 0 equals negative 2x minus 3y plus 18. Before Hesham blows a gasket, what should I do now? Y, Hesham. Okay, I should just leave it like that and watch his blood pressure go up and up till he like blows. Okay, 0 equals 2x plus 3y minus 18. Yeah? Um, 
Yeah, but I believe in doing less work, right? Because you can move the two couches to the other side or the one couch to that side, right? And then multiplying by negative one is pretty fast. And you know what? Students typically are always comfortable having zero on the right. So it's nice to put zero on the left once in a while so they actually know it's the same thing. Because if you always put stuff on the... Um, I do this one uh, lesson in grade 12. And all... Like I do four examples. And they all give the same answer. And I go, the coolest thing about this objective is no matter what you do, you always get the same answer. And they're like, really? And I said, no, it's a coincidence. Right? Like they do believe you because math, if they see it happen like three different times, they think it always happens. Right? And if you always have zero on the right, they always think you always have to put zero on the right. And I've had students go, you're allowed to put zero on the left? Yeah, they both mean the same thing. So it's, it's actually a higher level to try and put it on the left. Okay, so that's why um, all that uh, Sana was saying is she puts this over here, this over here, and then over here, and 18 over there, and then, so you move those two, and then that would be positive. But if this was a positive here, and you moved it over, moved it over, then you'd still have to do that negative step. So, whew, we'll I'll be on question three by the time you're still doing question one. Time is money. No, you know, whatever works for you, that's cool. Okay, I'm just bugging you. Okay. So, we'll do this one Santa's way. I'm all about appeasing the masses. The little people. Okay, so what, let's, let's get everything first. What do we do first? Multiply by 4. So, I will get 4y equals 3x minus 8. Okay? Now, let's move everything on the left side. Ah, <sighs> the work. But let's see. <laughs> now you'd move it to the right side because it's positive? Oh, okay. So now, so Sana's saying this one, she would just move over, she would minus 4y. So she'd get 0 equals 3x minus 4y minus 8. Okay? Because she already sees, oh, 3 is positive, so leave it on the, r on the right side, right? So you're like, don't move it if it's happy. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so if you took this one here, I just want you guys to know what we're talking about. So if you had 3y minus or equals negative 2x plus 18, so I was just saying, well, look, see, negative 2x, just bring it on this side, 2x. And then the plus 3y, and then minus 18 equals 0, okay? So she added 2x and minus 18. And you see you get the same thing? So whatever way you like, do it. Maybe. I am always like to be rebellious to the textbook. If you're not living on the edge, taking up too much space. Okay, there's the assignment, page 3, 4.